right, so now let's look at some of the temperature dependence of carrier concentrations. Uh, we had just seen the uh, ex expression we can use for calculating a Fermi uh, level, given that we have uh, holes, electrons, donors, and acceptors occupied according to a certain Fermi level. So let's dive in and do this. We utilize it, uh, this expression. Uh, we're going to consider a spatially homogeneous um, a field-free semiconductor, so no external fields, and etc. And we're going to just assume n-type doping for now. Okay, so we're going to chuck uh, the acceptors here, and we're going to look at uh, holes, electrons, and ionized dopants. Overall, we're of course interested in the electron density, uh, and that's what we'll plot next in the, in the chart here. All right. So there's different regions um, uh, that uh, uh, are characterized in the carrier density, uh, electron density in a semiconductor. It generally follows this trend as a function of temperature. The critical um, line here is one where the electron density N is equal to the donor density. Recall this region here below this uh, where the electron density is the donor uh, level density, the freeze-out region. We'll go into detail what we mean by that. Then there's something called the extrinsic region, and then there's a region called the intrinsic region, and we'll uh, dive into the physics and the interpretation of that here in a second. The intrinsic region uh, really stems from uh, the number of electrons being dominated by the intrinsic excitation of uh, uh, electrons from the valence band into the conduction band. All right, so the freeze-out region is explained as follows. As very, uh, when we have very cold temperatures, all the donors uh, will uh, have their electrons bound tightly to themselves. There's not enough thermal energy to go around to excite an electron into the conduction band edge. So they're tightly bound, that means we are basically at the uh, level of an intrinsic semiconductor that has very few electrons available. As we crank up the temperature, uh, more electrons can hop from the donor sites to the conduction band and be freely available. We still have a ne negligible intrinsic contribution like this where carriers, there's not enough thermal budget for electrons to be excited from uh, the uh, valence band into the conduction band. In the extrinsic region, we have reached the stage where basically all of the donor electrons have been excited out of their donor sites into the uh, semiconductor overall. And again, we're ne uh, there's negligible uh, excitation from the valence band. And here, in the intrinsic region, you have the dominant uh, air, uh, excitation where all electrons are beginning to be excited from the valence band into the conduction band and all of the donors have been already ionized but now there's way more electrons um, to be excited out of the uh, valence band. All right, so let's uh, uh, do some calculations with the expressions we had. We had already uh, defined the electron density as a delta function uh, density of state and C times the uh, Boltzmann distribution where EC minus EF is the difference between the Fermi function, uh, Fermi level against the conduction band. Let's reshape that expression while just dividing through NC and bringing that over here and bringing also the exponential over here to the other side. So we just multiply with E to the plus beta EC and we have an expression that just uh, expresses e to the beta EF. We want an expression of e to the beta EF that includes the electron density and the conduction band edge. We'll see where we need that in a second. The um, uh, distribution of carriers for the donors, or the uh, ionization of the donors, we have expressed in this form. Remember, we had this factor 2 here and there is the difference between EF minus ED. Now the reason why we wanted to have uh, E to the beta EF is because we want to plug it right in here in this exponential. Okay, so we do that 
and we uh, define this where we now have an expression that just depends on this beta EC that shows up here and still the ED is still the same as here. Okay, so we're just plugging this in and then uh, we're defining a quantity eta and, and, and psi and uh, like this and we have a, a compact expression for the ionized dope uh, donors as being expressed as the total number of donors divided by 1 plus n over psi. Okay, right now this is just shuffling symbols around finding expressions that are convenient. All right, so we have these expressions now for, for the donor, ionized donor expression over here with a new um, funny looking expression like this that depends solely on EC minus ED. All right, so now let's begin to plug those expressions in. Uh, we know that um, um, we, the product of P times N is Ni squared, so we can express P here as Ni squared over N. We know this is just N, translates back down here. And then here is the expression for the ionized donors, this guy here being plugged in here. Okay, so again, uh, nothing fancy going on, but now we just have an expression that depend, uh, that has n and the n, n psi in it. Okay, so no approximation so far. All we've done is shuffling some analytical symbols around, basically doing some algebra. Now, Let's pull this equation up here and let's assume that um, we are in the extrinsic region where we know that the number of electrons is going to be much larger than the um, intrinsic number of electrons. And let's assume that that is ballpark uh, the donor density. Okay, If that's the case, we can drop this term here, right? So if n is much, much larger than ni squared. We can drop that, that term off. Okay? That means we're left with this expression here. Okay, so then we transform this expression. It's just, again, a little bit of algebra. We get this n squared term here that you can imagine here being multiplied through. Okay, so we have a parabolic exp uh, expression and we can find the root of this uh, parabolic expression in the normal standard uh, form. So nothing fancy here, okay? Now, let's look at this expression of n as an, um, a function of n, n psi, okay? And uh, let's assume that n psi is much, much larger than the uh, donor density, okay? If that's the case, um, we can multiply this through here. So this guy uh, is going to cancel out here with this guy, and we have an n psi over half. And we end up with that n is roughly the number of donors. Okay? So the electron density concentration equals the donor's density and we can get the whole density from the mass action law. Okay. Now let's look at the intrinsic uh, region uh, uh, over here. Uh, we start again from the uh, expression of the ionized donors. And um, that at high temperatures must be the, the overall donor density, so we can neglect the uh, correction. We start from the same expression here and we <coughs> we uh, can neglect this term and we have an expression such that we find the roots and I like this and we can uh, calculate again the, the limits of extrinsic and intrinsic regions. All right so in the extrinsic region we find that n is roughly nd and in the intrinsic region, where uh, if the number of uh, intrinsic carriers is already much larger than Ni, then indeed N, N is approximately Ni. So this is basically a, a, 
a shuffling around of some algebra, algebraic expressions that are then founded in the, in the distribution and the uh, statistics of the donor ionization and the available electrons. All right, so how do we determine a Fermi level now that we uh, are given a, a, a carrier, a, a donor density and a temperature? So we have had derived this expression here, which is again our delta function where we are now after how do we obtain a Fermi level? We can uh, formulate this uh, around, uh, resolve this for EF, and we basically end up with a ratio between the number of electrons over NC. Okay, And if N, N is starting to be larger than NC, then um, we are beginning to uh, approach the uh, Fermi function. All right? So again, let's uh, use this expression here, P minus N plus ND, and use the expressions we had before. Again, it's this, this is the same expression we had derived in the previous subsection. Okay. All right, so given that uh, you have a donor density and a temperature, you know the donor levels, and you can assume, say, you have no uh, acceptors, you can calculate a Fermi function. And we have defined these three regions here, freeze-out, extrinsic, and intrinsic. All right? So now, in the next section, we're going to look at effects of multiple doping, co-doping, and heavy doping.